What is up, everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knife Works, smkw.com, and I'm here with the one, the only, <laughs> Tony Watkins. Tony, how are you doing today, man? Man, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Always well, glad to be here under the big blue roof, brother. We are glad to have you here, Tony. And, uh, Tony, you have got an incredible history with the company, <laughs> and we're going to talk about that and your history with knives as well. But okay. before we get started, folks, if you like this video, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you will know when we drop new videos and we talk to really cool people like Tony here. <laughs> so without further ado, let's light it up. Now, we were looking for some old stuff. Hello, I'm Tony Watkins with Smoky Mountain Knife Works. <laughs> Today I have a... Hello, I'm Tony Watkins with Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Hello, I'm Tony Watkins with Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Hello, I'm Tony Watkins with Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Wow. We were concentrating so hard on that last one, too. So wow. We got some really cool sound. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's <laughs> so great, man. I Hello there, I'm Tony Watkins. Welcome to Knives Live TV. All right, brother. That's just that's awesome, man. Wait, what, what a way to start it off. I'm, that's really cool. I can't stop smiling right now because the, I, I looked so much different then, and I mean, I definitely have gained a lot of weight and gotten a lot of gray hairs over what I'm doing for the company now. Uh, but those were some good days, really, yeah. really good days, man. Well, and that's one reason why we wanted to have you on this series because <laughs> I, you and I have talked a lot uh, yes, in the office and stuff. Just talking about the old days and talking about the things you guys did back then yeah because we we get questions all the time about knives live tv and yeah. the tv channel that we uh, that we used to have and you guys did some really cool stuff we were actually talking yesterday about how you guys used before we had the studio here mm -hmm. uh you used to fly over to north carolina that's correct uh, yeah. We're at in North Carolina. Ashboro, Ashboro, North Carolina. A gentleman that was a friend of our producer at the time had a studio. Uh, he was doing producing some things locally over there. We were building ours. We were in the process of getting that done. Uh, and uh, we had some local talent helping us out. Uh, Phil Williams, as uh, you and I discussed. Yep. And uh, Phil, uh, well, his schedule wouldn't allow for him to drive over. Uh, so we had to take a plane uh, and do the show and then fly back. Uh, of course, some other folks would go ahead of us uh, with a van and the merchandise and and get all the programming done for the graphics and and all that stuff it would stay a couple of days in Ashboro for every show so it was kind of a grind there for a while yeah i bet that uh, that sounds like a grind right there now let's go back and i want to talk about uh how did you get get into knives originally i, I know we've talked about your dad and and how, him being a collector as well so how did you get it get started in knives? Well, more or less, it was not a, a choice, actually. Um, I grew up with my father worked in knife shows. That's how he made his living, and he would go to flea markets. He never wanted to get any bigger than he could be and handle himself. And he had a, a van, and he had knives, and he had a route, and he would do the shows. And, of course, at that time, when I was much, much younger, uh, John and Kevin, who founded Smoky Mountain Knife Works, were still doing the shows. Uh, Mr. Jim Frost. I mean, I could go on and on with the folks uh, that were regular players uh, at these NKCA and then other sanctioned shows. Of course, the Blade Show was going on back then as well. That was a lot of fun. I used to in the Hyatt Regency, Knoxville. It's got a new name now. I'm not sure what it is. Right. On the hill. Uh, I would love to run around when I could get away from the table and play in those <laughs> elevators and uh, things like that, you know. So, And I remember Mike Prater forging Damascus uh, at the Hyatt Regency in like 1982 in, <laughs> in Knoxville. That is wild. Yeah, so I didn't have much choice. Um, it was sort of, you need to, I need you to help me at this show. And so I was counting money, making change, showing knives, selling knives. Uh, it's just ever since I can really basically remember yeah. that, that I was big enough to, to do that. And so it just sort of was how I, I, I did, just how I grew up. And then uh, when I was looking for some work, I uh, was engaged to be married at the time. I didn't really want to leave East Tennessee. I had a couple of offers to go out of state actually with uh, case knives uh, at one time. As, and I did not do that. And I so I so I was going to the mountains one day with my fiance at the time, and we pulled in the park. I was going to drop off an application, is what I was going to do. And I met Kevin coming in. He was parking his truck out here, and uh, 
he uh, he said, well, just put my name down as a reference, Tony. And I said, all right, I'll do that. And the uh, next thing I know, I got a phone call and uh, I had an interview to go start in our Dandridge warehouse uh, July of 1994. They had just gotten that facility open. And so I was sort of learning. I came in the door pulling orders, uh, just like any other Joe uh, after I graduated from UT. Uh, but hey, he said, learn all you can. And I've been doing that ever since, uh, learning all I can and doing all I can for Smokey. You know, I always said, and, and I, I, I know he feels this way, and I know I do. I'm like, man, it's not my house, and it's yours. And he's like, it's as much yours as it is mine, Tony. And it's really not true because I'm not a pipes, but you know what? I've always remembered that, and I try to carry that with me every time I come in the door and do the best I can for this joint, you know? Well, and that's what makes it such a beautiful family-run business is the people like you that take ownership in what you do and take pride in the yes. job that you do and the work that you do, no matter what it is. Yeah. And and really show that. It it, it means a lot to everyone around here. You've you've really made an impression on everyone around here, that, and, and I'm that's saying nice a to, wonderful impression. Well, that's nice to hear, brother. I'll now. Does, so that means obviously you're from East Tennessee. Yes, sir. Born and raised uh, between Jefferson City and Dandridge. Uh, mom, school teacher. Dad worked for the state of Tennessee, uh, Department of Welfare, had a master's degree, uh, all that. Decided he was making more money than selling knives than, than uh, going, to, <laughs> going to the state job. And so uh, he went full time in 1975. I was five years old uh, into the knife business as an independent uh, knife. Well, peddler, let's just say. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, fast forwarding ahead, uh, you started in Dandridge at the warehouse there. That's correct. And uh, then worked your way up. Now, how did the uh, TV show come about? Chris Kirk, the hopping mad hillbilly, mm -hmm. was selling knives. And he wanted to sell knives. And he wanted to get with Kevin to, to buy knives. So, we were doing, uh, I was actually, after a stint, uh, sharpening knives downstairs and customer service in the back. Then Mike Parker came to me one day and asked me to come down into collectibles. Well, of course, being in collectibles, uh, we did a whole lot of things other than just collectible knives. And we, I was buying uh, or getting knives to coordinate Chris's shows. Uh, then we, uh, then he lost his ride, so we brought him in house. We were shooting a show in order entry literally at a table like this, right behind, behind us here in, in order entry. And I was coordinating all the product for his show out of our inventory, that getting his samples together, making sure we could sell it and checking with the vendors to see if I could get more. All the logistics that make selling product on television work. Right. Um, and then at that point, uh, Kevin, somehow, some way, and I don't have all the details, and if I did, I would put them out there. Uh, Kevin decided to buy Chris out. And Knives Live was formed and created basically at that point. And my boss at the time, uh, well, I had actually moved from collectibles uh, to another gentleman. And, well, basically, we formed a television department. There was just two of us. But, <laughs> but that's what we did. And uh, the next thing you know, uh, we're looking at, uh, you know, Phil came in to help out. Steve did the first shows. Um, and then I was, uh, well, I was actually, uh, it was younger and used to ski a lot. And I was skiing out in Lake Tahoe before I did my first show. Just as nervous as a cat on a hot tin <laughs> roof, man. I mean, I was worried about it all week. Uh, and I finally got back here and everybody's like, Tony, man, you got this. This is going to be good and you're going to do great. And I, you know, I, I always just thought about that. And then I got up there and I just, and I wanted to, to sell the stuff for Kevin and obviously, you know, to keep my job and, <laughs> and, and all that good stuff. And so that's, uh, that's kind of roundabout how we got into it. And I think we ran for about nine years, eight or nine years. Yeah, it, it uh, ran for a while. And yeah. I mean, sold a lot of knives. Oh, man. Oh, in the early days, it was unbelievable. I mean, we could hop on there with a new Rough Rider item and, and they were so value priced at that time in such good quality i mean it was uh, nothing to sell three or four hundred pieces uh, right in an evening of something and we would work and work to find just and it really got tough over the years to dig out features yeah i mean to carve out exclusives we even eventually developed uh, the robeson line uh, a lot of sfos with with case and and queen at the time uh frost every, anybody we could to yeah. come up with something unique and i did all that uh and steven uh, the, i i the other guys helped out with that some uh, as well. Um, obviously, they 
I mean, we all did. We we had to, yeah. to to coordinate it, and that's what was my job was coordinator. Well, then the host thing came along, and uh, you know, I, I had been wanting to get on the air and and do the show as I, I really kind of thought I could, uh, just something I felt like I could do, and then I got the chance. And then I had a lot of good feedback, and I guess I kind of had a gig till the end, uh, the, until it was finally the airtime got us, and we just weren't able to to do that anymore. Yeah. Well, uh, and I, I'll say this: uh, since I started here, one of the there, there's one catchphrase that uh, you come up with that uh, has really stuck with everyone here, and uh, I don't rem- I don't know if I remember it exactly right, but uh, y- you said something to the effect of "I've got some knives, and I'd like to sell them." <laughs> Well, <laughs> you know, that actually is a very recent saying. Um, when I was on TV, it was a whole lot of, it's bone, and uh, things things like that. Uh, that I tried to make it up and fun for everybody, but no, I'm not sure. Exactly. It was uh, when purchasing uh, moved upstairs, uh, and uh, we were coordinating a lot more with the World Wide Web and, and doing things like that. And I actually made that statement to our, our webmaster, uh, Jason, uh, about some knives that I had gotten in, and I was trying trying to get them online and, and get them sold and get them out of here. That's actually just been a couple of years ago, but it really did stick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's a great line. It's, it really speaks to what we're all here for. Yeah, I, I mean, I have some knives. I've, I've got some knives. I'd like to sell them. And that's <laughs> basically exactly how that came about. And not a week goes by that somebody uh, up there in the web department or one of you guys or somebody else uh, brings that up. So yeah, it's just one of those things. I mean, it's uh, it, I call it. It's my home, really. I mean, yeah. Um, it's just, just some days that you're just glad to be here. Yeah. <laughs> now let's go through the transition. So, and I mean, everybody knows uh, the the internet really changed a lot in in how business works across the board. It doesn't. I mean, it doesn't matter what industry you're talking about. But also for us in, in a in a retail setting, you know, we started off as a brick and mortar store here and then the internet comes along and and really changes the game and how uh you have to kind of approach things yes sir and so that kind of put you in a little bit of, uh, of a different position how did how did that come about and you moving into purchasing and and working as a buyer well uh, quite frankly i was a buyer before that because I was buying, but mostly, I mean, really, it was for everybody, but primarily for the television show. Uh, any rebuys or uh, new products, POs, things like that. Uh, hey, well, okay, we've got a hundred of these. Okay, well, I want them, and I'm going to put them on the show. Uh, that kind of thing. Well, when the show ended, we actually had a conversation, and Kevin had an idea, and I had another idea, and I just told him, I said, Kevin, I'd be a lot better off uh, helping the company. Uh, if I'm buying knives instead of selling knives, um, frankly, because we didn't have that avenue of the TV show. Uh, and so, uh, that, uh, basically just right after the show disbanded, he came downstairs one day and he walked in the purchasing office, which was across the hall from our TV office, uh, downstairs. And he's like, walked in there to those ladies. And I was upstairs actually shooting some of the first product videos that we ever did on uh, on the website. Uh-huh. Uh, there may be a few of those still floating around out there. I'm not sure. Uh, but they were certainly a different world from what you guys do. Uh, it was just me at a table with a knife and, and a voice. Uh, anyway, so he walked in the office and he said, all right, guys, where's Tony going to go? And uh, the, I was, they moved me literally. Misty Jama and those folks, they literally moved me across the hall and had me a desk set up. By the time I got finished shooting product videos, <laughs> uh, I came back downstairs and my stuff was all in the purchasing office. And I guess you might say uh, the rest is sort of history. We had some changing uh, of purchasing management uh, go on. And, of course, Josh was put over. He came to me first, and he said, man, we're going to do this. Uh, I, I need you to do it. I need. I want you to do it. Uh, we're gonna go upstairs. We're gonna work with the web guys, and we're gonna we're gonna make this thing better. And uh, well, man, I'll tell you what, I've never been so busy in my life, but I think we're making it better. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's 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 going really well now. Uh, as far as as a buyer and for purchasing, what uh, what brands do you? cover well currently uh of course case be the biggest one i do take care of zippo uh try to take care of our import brands as well uh, the best i can the rough rider the marbles so the house brands fox and hound american hunter things like that uh, uh and of course our our 
marbles sfos that's a couple of my my bigger ones right. i have condor um take care of great eastern which is really not a big thing that their knives just they don't even sit around they just yeah. you, you you build a number and a po and then the next thing you know <laughs> they're, they're, they're gone, they're gone. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much that uh but i do do handle those brands that i have bought for a, a long list of other brands right uh, but currently, we've got more buyers, and well, we've also taken over production of catalog pages. And so, uh, my vendor list is a little shorter these days than it used to be. But the workload is 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 definitely uh, it's all there for sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, we, but I've handled a lot of different vendors. I mean, I could go into more. I've bought the sharpening vendors. Uh, I've really bought a little bit of everything except kitchen. I used to do Spiderco for years. Uh, I always enjoyed doing that that was some of my favorite knives growing up i mean i had a delica in like 82 you know yeah. i i or may it might have been called that it but i think it was a delica now i, I gotta ask this as far as your your memories here with Smokey, what is is one of the things that uh i guess stands out most to you what what is one of your favorite memories it can it can be great it can be simple what's what's one thing that stands out to you more than anything well, the most vivid thing happened long before I ever got employed at Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Can I tell that story? Absolutely. Okay. Smoky Mountain Knife Works was in downtown Sevierville. I was there with my father. Uh, I guess I'd been swimming or to the pool or something that day. I don't know. We were picking up some knives, uh, and uh, we were standing out in front of the store, the storefront there on the sidewalk. Uh, Kevin when he was younger uh super just a funny guy prankster i mean you know just a well he he well, he promptly proceeds to pants me right there on the curb and i'm wearing swimming trunks and i don't think i need to go into any more detail than that there i stood at like age 12 or whatever what well, might even not have even been 12 at that time this has been a long time ago but that's probably one of the things that sticks out the most but um I'll tell you something I'm super proud of that we've done at Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Um, we, we did we raised a whole lot of money for uh, UT Medical Center Cancer uh, Hospital. I lost my mom to cancer in 2000. Uh, Kevin's had a, you know issues with it. Uh, so many people have, and and I don't know the dollar amount. I know that Mr. Pipes would, uh, but it was a couple hundred grand, I'm pretty sure, over the time that we did it with the proceeds from the knives that we made for the different types of cancer. Uh, and that's something I'm just super, super proud of. Um, but it's, I mean, there's so many, man. I mean, yeah. uh, we... Uh, there's so many memories of, of this place. This is something that we're going to continue on. I, I guarantee you we're going to have a, a, a longer series with you. Okay. I'm um, just talking about stuff and telling stories, but uh, I, I absolutely love that. <laughs> Kevin pantsing you at like 12 uh, years old. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, right on the curb. I mean, I'm talking, <laughs> I'm standing in, on in, on the city street in downtown Sevierville, and uh, it, it, was, uh, it was a vivid uh, memory. But uh, And, you know, my dad, that's something funny, is my dad, he had a van. And John and Kevin would ride to shows with him sometimes. Well, Kevin, like me, if somebody else was in the front seat, he was sitting on the big metal box behind the seats where he always kept his case knives in a big old metal box. Now, we still have the box. Kevin's asked me about it a couple times. It's up in the basement. Uh, Jennifer and I saw it the other day when we were getting some knives from up there um, because we've been trying to work through his uh, inventory here and sell them in the store. And it's been that's been a good program for us as well. But uh, the. Uh, He's just not able to do it any anymore. But Kevin, he all he likes to talk about the box. So, uh, and then I just remember so many, so many different things about you know just just lived it. And since I've been here, man, I've been everywhere. I've bought old knives. I've bought new knives. I've done TV, pulled orders, uh, packed orders, stock packing stations. Uh, man, and we we just we did a lot of good stuff with the uh, TV, and then we gave away some boats, did some footage with Shred and. Uh, when we had those promotions back then, right, uh, and just some fun stuff we we got to do uh, with that was was really really neat. Uh, to be honest with you. So, yeah. Tony, that's great. And thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. This has been phenomenal. And I, I tell you what, as far as people that I come to when I've got a question, you're one of the people that I come to more 
first and foremost and more <laughs> often because your wealth of knowledge as far as knives goes is amazing and I really appreciate that you've you've helped me tremendously in uh, being prepared and getting stuff together and uh, knowing where we're going and uh, if I've ever got a question about something that we're getting or something that we've got or if I've got a question about something that we had yeah, right. you know it's it, I'm always coming to you and yeah. and I really appreciate that it's 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 really helped me a lot oh, and I'm uh, always there if I, if I can help you I certainly will not as up on some of the modern stuff like you guys are uh, but there again it's there's so much to know now yeah it's really kind of hard to know everything uh, but glad to help out well you are <laughs> you you've been a great resource for me I appreciate it because your knowledge is amazing and I appreciate that Tony yes, thank sir. you so much and enjoy we appreciate it and uh, do hope we can this do will be more. this will be the first of many I guarantee it so <laughs> All right man Folks, again, if you if you like this video, like, share, comment, subscribe. Um, Tony, again, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. And uh, folks, remember, here at Smoky Mountain Knife Works, if it cuts, we carry it.